is normally caused by objects vibrating. When you blow a raspberry, you can feel your lips moving. But it's only when you slow things down to much slower than normal speed that you can actually see the lips vibrating and wobbling. Objects that are large make big waves, or in scientific terms create waves of large wavelength. And this means that they create waves which are low in pitch or low in frequency. Small objects, on the other hand, create small wavelengths and therefore create higher pitched or high frequency notes. Loudspeakers such as this one cause air to vibrate. They push the air molecules together, causing compressions or high pressures, and then they move the air molecules apart, causing low pressures or air refractions. And it's this variation in pressure that gives you a sound wave. Now these pressures are actually very small. They can only really move very light things, such as bubbles. In fact, if you consider something more normal in pressure, say the pressure inside your bicycle tyre, that's about 40 psi. If that was an acoustic wave, it would be an equivalent to a sound at 200 decibels, which is louder than the space shuttle taking off and more than enough to blow your eardrums apart. When sound spreads out from a loudspeaker, it's rather like ripples on a pond after you've thrown a stone into it. Think about blowing up a balloon. You may have noticed when you blow a balloon up that as it gets bigger, it gets more and more transparent. That's because the rubber of the balloon has to spread over a bigger area. The same thing happens with sound energy. As you get further from a loudspeaker, it has to spread over a bigger area. And therefore, it has to get quieter, because the energy is smaller. When we clap our hands, you can actually see that the hands vibrate quite a lot. But actually this isn't really the source of noise. What you're mostly hearing is what's called acceleration noise. When we bring our hands together, the air is forced out from between our hands. This creates a little compression wave, which is an acoustic wave, and is what we hear. You can tell that's the source of the sound, because when I clap my hands in different ways, you get a different noise quality. The cymbals are different from the hand claps. In this case, the ringing, or the vibration of the cymbals, is what dominates, and the acceleration noise is far less important. In the following clips, a mixture of things will be going on. There will be acceleration noise as the objects hit the ground, and then there will be the ringing or resonance of the fragments as they fly apart.
balloon with a fine powder to show a shock wave. The air inside the balloon is at a high pressure, and when it bursts, this pressure forms a wave, which forms the familiar bang that you hear. Behind is left a halo, and this is evidence of the pressure wave or the shock wave. So what causes a whip to crack? Well, it's a mini sonic boom. Now, sonic booms are more often associated with supersonic aircraft and with a space shuttle. Imagine a boat going down a river. You can see wake waves coming out the back. And the same thing is happening with aircraft. Now, provided the aircraft stays slower than the speed of sound, then these waves can get out of the way. But as soon as the aircraft gets above the speed of sound, these waves bunch together and eventually form a shock wave, which is the sonic boom you hear. And that speed is called Mach 1, which is the speed of sound. So how does a whip make a sonic boom? Well, when I crack the whip, I start by making a little shape in the whip. And that shape, the wave shape, propagates along the whip. Now you'll notice that the whip tapers. It gets smaller and smaller as it goes along the end. So although it starts off quite slowly, at about a tenth of the speed of sound, by the time it reaches the tip, it's accelerated to two or three times the speed of sound. And that's what creates the little sonic boom. <laughs>